God loved us and forgave us before we were even born, before we were even around, before he even knew when we would accept him, if we would accept him. Of course, he knew if we would, because he knew, knows everything. But the point is that grace is such an unbelievable gift that it is hard to, to consider in the context of day-to-day -day life. Uh, during this series, uh, and, and I'm probably going to see if we can get a couple, three weeks out of this to, to really explore it. But uh, grace is not just a gift. Grace references salvation. It references justification and righteousness. It references sanctification, which is a process we go through throughout our entire life when we accept Jesus as our Savior. It, tell, it deals with the security of our salvation and assurance of our salvation, and it sets us up for discipleship. So grace is, a, is an element in our lives. It, 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 <laughs> the word grace appears in the New Testament 148 times, so we're not talking about a casual subject here. <laughs> we're talking about something that's <clears throat> exceptionally pervasive and exceptionally critical in our lives as Christians and Christian men. And uh, to help understand it, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story about a man who was going to visit a friend of his who was a pastor of a church. And uh, this man was going to visit because he was going to make a presentation during the mm -hmm. services at that church. And as it turns out, when he got to this uh pastor's uh, city where he was going to visit, he realized that uh, the entire church body was going to spend the day celebrating a wedding of a couple of their members. And the pastor of the church said, hey, why don't you just join us at the wedding? You have nothing to do tonight anyway. Why don't you just come on to the wedding? So he said, all right, that'd be great. So we did. They went to the wedding. The wedding uh, was held at a a beautiful resort, and uh, after the services, they had an exceptionally sumptuous buffet and banquet. And this man participated, as all the guests participated, in the uh, in the banquet. They saw a video of the bride's father, who was dying of cancer and couldn't really be at the wedding, but he paid for everything well in advance to ensure that everybody had everything that they wanted. And he enjoyed this meal and had a great time at the, at the wedding. And then they all came back to the pastor's uh, church the next day, and they were, of course, talking a lot about the wedding. And the pastor said, you know what? He said, uh, I've invited uh, a friend of mine here to come and talk to you today. But before he delivers his message to you, let's ask him how he enjoyed the way. The man said, well, I enjoyed it very much. It was fantastic. I showed up. I had a wonderful meal. I was a, sort of a stranger in the crowd. I didn't know anybody. Nobody knew me. But he said, you know what? It reminds me of God's grace. It was a gift from somebody that I never knew. Now that's how simple God's grace is. It's a gift from God through Jesus that we have to accept and know him. So it's, it's kind of interesting how it is in fact unmerited, unwarranted, undeserved, but it's simply a gift. And we have to understand, or it's helpful for us to understand, that uh, by grace, we've been saved. If you'll go to the next slide, uh, whoever's driving slides here, there we go. Uh, Ephesians 2.8 simply says, by grace, you have been saved. Now, your feeling about your salvation is your feeling, and it's uh, something that you yourself hold. But for me, it's pretty important. And for me, it's probably the best gift I've ever received in my entire life. And uh, I think our concept of grace is the key to understanding 
what it is to become a Christian and a believer. Joe? Yes. Uh, did you want us to uh, hold off on any questions or? No, uh, p please feel free to, to uh, weigh in any at any time. This is kind of a, a discussion more than a presentation. So please do. Good, thanks. So, so uh, I, I want to ask about this. You, you talked about the, the visiting pastor said, uh, great, wonderful, free gift from someone I didn't know. Yes. And so I'm wondering, thinking grace, we, we get it from a God we know and love, who knows and loves us. Uh, so I'm curious about adding that phrase, someone I, I didn't know. Well, uh, we, we, I so think, we, we get uh, I think what, oh, I'm sorry. what I mean by that is that God gave you his grace before you knew it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We get salvation mm -hmm. after we know God. We had yes. to come to know him. Yeah, but you had to come to know him. So he gave you his grace and made his him. salvation available for you before you ever knew him. That's the interesting thing about Jesus' death on the cross. He died for everyone before many, before many people ever accepted him. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he we, gave the gift of salvation and the gift of forgiveness uh, before many people ever met him. Mm. So that's that's kind of what I meant by the concept, Ken. Because uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it is a you, gift that's available. Would you say that grace isn't grace, grace is not a gift until it's received? Mm. Well, sure. In fact, you know, uh, it's often difficult see, to see accepted. things this way, but there are some things in uh, our relationship with God and Jesus that are conditional. Yeah. And one of them is salvation. Mm -hmm. We have to accept and believe Jesus, take him into our heart as our savior and bring him into our lives and commit to, to him. Because remember, Jesus is the only way to get to God. And it's the only way to be saved. So uh, to some extent, uh, our salvation is conditional. But the grace has always been there. So I have, a, I have a story that I used to think was me showing grace. Uh -huh. I'm walking down a sidewalk and there's someone ahead of me and they're eating out of a bag. And... As we're walking along, they've finished eating. They crumple up the bag and just throw it into a bush along the sidewalk. And I don't know if they know that I'm walking behind them, you know, 30 yards or not. But I immediately get judgmental and angry about the litter bug. But something inside of me, the Holy Spirit says, Tom, just let it go. And I picked up the bag and I threw it away for that person. Mm. In, my, in my mind, what that person deserved was for me to be all upset with them and tell them how wrong they were. Mm. But I showed him grace by letting him continue on. And I basically took the penalty. I picked up the trash and threw it away for him. So he has no idea whatever happened to that trash he threw. He has mm. no idea that anybody picked it up for him. So he could not have received any grace from that since he didn't know anything about it. But yet, it seems to me I was showing him grace or that, that phrase gets used a lot in that kind of context, but it was it really grace or was I just, you know, doing my good boy scout deed of the day. Well, well you, were, you I, did I, give I him a that, gift that he, from someone he never knew. So, yeah. Tom, I, you, Tom I, I think you were showing mm -hmm. God that you were extending grace to others because unless that person ahead of you saw you pick up that trash, that was how mm -hmm. would they ever even know? Exactly. Right. So you so you were you were just doing that you you were doing the 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 unmerited favor and the virtue from God that that was between you and God at that moment. I never okay, yeah. I never look at that angle. That's good. Tom, let me give you something to think about, which is really in context with a comment you made earlier about grace needs to be received. So mm -hmm. let me just give you some context. This is a true story. <clears throat> it's the United States versus Wilson. It's natural court case that you can look up. 
online. And basically, uh, George Wilson committed a crime and was tried and found guilty. He was sentenced for execution, but a presidential decree granted him a full pardon. When he chose to refuse the pardon, he chose to die. It's really an amazing story. And one of the definitions I gave early on uh, as we began today with respect to grace is mercy, pardon, a reprieve. He chose not to accept that, just like the salvation that God offers everyone. Yeah. So it's a conscious decision to accept it, to reach out. Um, and in this case, George Wilson chose not to, and the, he, he ended up being executed. But he had a pardon available to him that, that he denied. So anyway, interesting story, United States versus Wilson, FYI. Well, let's continue. Thank you, Chris. Let's yeah. continue down this list. I mean, really, how does a person become a Christian? Simply by grace. How do you become saved? Simply by grace. How do you know that you're eternally saved? Simply by grace. <clears throat> how can one live a Christian life? Simply by grace. And how should a Christian be motivated to serve God? Simply by grace. So grace isn't uh, uh, an event. Grace is a anointing, and it is something that uh, completely and totally introduces elements into your life that you couldn't get any other way. Mm -hmm. And assurance of salvation and giving you freedom to serve God and others is just part of it. Okay, it's a continued. It's probably your your continuous improvement capability. Let's go to the next slide. And none of it, yeah, okay, here we go. Okay. It's undeserved, unmerited. Okay. Yeah, it's unmerited, undeserved, unwarranted. It's a gift paid for by someone else. I, I, I have a misspelling there that I, I, that I may not even know, okay? So um, let's let's unpack this a little bit. Why do you suppose it's uh, a gift that is uh, unmerited, undeserved, and unwarranted? Well, I'm thinking uh, for merited, deserved, and warranted, it would be wages rather than a gift. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Yep. All right. What else comes to mind? This is... Uh, this is the concept of grace that is often very, very difficult for us to understand because the world we live in is uh, about works. Yeah, Joe, when I think about that, I think about the challenge of sustaining perfection. And in order for us to be aligned with God, you know, we've got to, we, that sin needs to be removed. I mean, it's, it's oil and water. And it's very difficult uh, in, in the clay feet that all of us have to sustain living a life every single day without sin. And so grace has to be an integral part of facilitating that relationship between us and God. Because left to our own, to, to, to reach that level required to maintain that relationship, it's impossible. It's impossible mm. without grace. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's uh, a very, a very good way of describing that, Chris. Um, if if you had, <clears throat> if you had to earn grace, mm. how would you know if you ever earned it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> You if you had to do some sort of work in order to deserve, to deserve it, how would you ever know if you got there? Yeah. yeah. But what do we deserve? We, uh, it has nothing to do with what you deserve. It has everything to do with God's love for you. Mm -hmm. God's grace is unmerited, undeserved, and unwarranted. It's a gift that he gave you. He gives all of us a gift available to all of us. And it has to be a gift and it has to be uh, unconditional 
Because otherwise, how would you know if you had it? Mm -hmm. You can't check off the boxes. You can't work for it. You can't. You can't keep score to get it. It's just there, and it's more powerful than just a simple gift, also, isn't it? Well, I mean, sure. You think of, of holidays. You think of Christmas. You give a gift to someone. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. In those circumstances, mm -hmm. it's, sadly, in our society, it's it's expected that you get a gift. And, well, you know, it, if it, you're a good it, boy it, all it, year, it, you'll it, get lots of gifts. Yeah, it's the ultimate gift, and 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 that's a very good point, Tom. Because one of the one of the ways, well, one of the reasons this is often confusing to people is because we are designed to be works driven. We're designed to be effort equals performance equals reward. Driven. Very true. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's how our culture is wired. But frankly, it's changing a little bit in today's world because of all the entitlement mentality. But nonetheless, as human beings, we're pretty much geared to the idea that if I do this, this way, I'll get this. Right, right. Grace is totally undeserved, unmerited, and unwarranted. Well, you that, have it because God loves you. Yeah. I mean, that. of course, this is why it's so hard, even as familiar as we are as believers with it. Yeah. It, it's still kind of hard. God's economy is is not ours. No. And, and, you know, there's a whole, just sidebar here, there's a whole quite extensive literature in, in uh, anthropology on gift giving, which of course is yeah. widespread in human societies. And, mm -hmm. and, and the point fundamentally being that giving a gift creates an obligation to repay. Yes. And so gift giving winds up being kind of like the glue, if you will, that that holds society together, mm -hmm. right? It's it reminds us of our, you know, you know, being in in society and we're dependent on other people and this sort of thing. Sure. But but it's always with this sort of so to speak strings attached. Yes, give, exactly. give and take. You know, right. I told you, <clears throat> I've told you guys on several uh, occasions the experience I had when I learned how how to uh, be a generous person, how I spent some time studying uh, philanthropy and generosity. And, mm -hmm. and really, uh, grace is sort of the ultimate example of the spirit of generosity. God gives it to us without any strings attached. It's unconditional. Yeah, yeah. The only condition in all of this is you accept Jesus as your Savior. Yeah, we'll accept it. That's it. I don't know anything. I don't, what? No, that's you right. Know. It's yeah. hard to get your head around it because yeah. we're, our culture is driven by performance-driven reward. Yeah. So, well, also, also, grace is probably the ultimate re-gift because we can give that. Oh, good, good. to yeah. others. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And still, and yeah. still, and still have it. Yeah. It's not like we're giving it away. That's right. So it's extended, and and, yeah. and we we have that That's forever, and we can certainly re-gift that to others. That's good. Well, John, you, you're a uh, you're a great tee up for the next slide. So let's go to the next slide. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done, John. <laughs> well, I think I think that's called idiot savant. <laughs> hey, Joe, just a quick question for you. As yeah. We go on to the next slide. As I'm thinking here and listening to everyone, for. Uh, providing excellent input, the thought comes, does grace cost something? Does grace cost you something? Mm. Did Any... grace cost God something? Yeah. Is there a cost associated with grace to the person who extends that to another? Is there a cost? Yes, yes, yes. Now look at yeah. the cost that Jesus well, paid. I would ask that I would frame the question a little slightly differently and say, does love have a cost? Yeah. No. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Does it, you know, what's the cost of being a parent and loving your children? Yeah. Hey, no. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Well, <clears throat> Let's take a look at this next slide because it, uh, I want to introduce you to just a general uh, 
biblical idea here. You know, I, you know me, I often go into the Hebrew understanding of a lot of things. And uh, <clears throat> grace kind of relates to a Hebrew word that means to show favor, which obviously is what it is. <laughs> it's the best favor you're ever going to get. But I distinguish it uh, as follows. A love that goes upward is worship. We mm. worship in praise. We honor God. We send our praises and, and our worship up. Love that goes outward is affection. Those things we go out and take care of our family. We do things to show our affection and our respect. Love that stoops is grace. And that's really what this word means or what it's about. Uh, God actually stoops down and picks us up. And the whole concept here is someone that is superior stoops down and serves someone that is inferior. And I don't mean that to have any political implications to the words. I'm simply saying that God scoops down and takes care of us. And that type of love is what grace is. Because God, grace is God's loving way of showing us favor that we do not deserve. Mm. I did it in bold letters because that's really the concept and that's really the core definition of grace is we don't deserve it. Mm. There's nothing we can do to earn it. There's nothing we can do to deserve it. It's simply, it's simply grace. It's simply a gift. And uh, <clears throat> that's why it's so important to understand that uh, the way that you acknowledge grace in your life is mm -hmm. you use it to build yourself through sanctification into a disciple and someone who uh, carries out the Great Commission. And that's part of what grace gives you, is that ability to be different. And to be touched and to be loved differently and to be able to share that with others. You know, uh, we talked a lot about leadership in this series the last several months this year. The overall concept of leadership was really what we're driving at. And I would submit to you that grace is God's way of installing leadership capacity in all of us. <clears throat> Because we all have the ability to stoop down and show love to others, however we may want to do it. Mm. I can tell by the silence that the, I can hear the wheels turning in everybody's yeah. brain as we go through this stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, uh, you're you're exactly right, Joe. I think everyone's kind of thinking what that might look like. Yep. It's interesting because <laughs> while you said that, I was thinking of people over the course of my career that I reported to or people who were in leadership positions within the companies I was with. And for those who extended grace to those that fell short at certain times, uh, they might've made a mistake during a meeting. They might've made a mistake at some point in their career. Uh, I, can, I can visualize those, remember those leaders who extended grace to those uh, that made a mistake or made some mistakes but they, will, they were still worthy of continuing to be a part of the team. I can also recall uh, some leaders who did not extend that grace and were very, very hard on others and over time lost respect of those people who reported to them and became less effective in their role. I don't know if anybody else has had similar experiences, but that's the thing that I was thinking as we were having this discussion right now. Well, I, I have quite a perspective on that subject, Chris, because I spend, I've spent most of my professional life in developing people and developing leaders. And I do, I continue to do that today. And I would tell you, uh, and I know you, you probably think I'm biased and I probably am to some extent, but to me, the, the best leaders I've ever met are servant leaders. Yeah. They're leaders that have uh, the heart of people and, um, uh, I know this word is difficult to use in typical corporate public settings, but love is really what servant leaders demonstrate. Yeah. Uh, a humility, a vulnerability, a willingness to demonstrate grace, if you will, 
mm. the grace they've been given and to extend that grace freely to others that uh, they have some sort of influence over, if you will. Yeah, and we've talked about that a great deal. We've talked about how vulnerability develops influence and influence is really what develops leadership. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, Joe, Joe, can I, excuse oh, me, sure, can, I, can I jump in? Because I, I, I your very provocative uh, uh, presentation here, I, I find myself uh, kind of focusing in on deserve. Mm -hmm. And okay. what immediately comes to mind is uh, pride mm -hmm. and uh, standards. Mm -hmm. That's to say, um, if, if everybody's above average and, and, you know, everybody gets a trophy, then grace is, is cheap, right? It, it, it doesn't, it's not held to, it's not in the context of standards that we can't live up to. So, so there's that whole piece, but also this this idea of pride. No, I deserve it. I, I deserve, right? Me, me. I, I deserve this, right? It, it's sure that could be. It, it undermines the all that of today. Absolutely, sure. Everybody gets a trophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah good point. Yeah, I, I was still thinking about uh, Chris's point about the U.S. versus Wilson and the idea of, of grace costing, and it, it seems to me to accept grace does cost pride yes yes yeah good good that's good uh, um, right, well i i think uh i i would i would challenge that to the extent that um to live a life based on god's blessings and live a life as a believer and to be someone who distinguishes himself by being that does required you to not be prideful. I, I would say that pride is something you don't want in that life, but grace uh, comes regardless of how you behave. You're good. You have God's grace. Mm. To accept mm. the grace would be something of humility. Well, here again. Yeah, um, yeah Ken. Yeah, good yeah point. that's how I would see it, Ken. Mm. Okay. I mean, if you're pride, if you're a prideful individual, we all know. Yeah. You know, again, we all have clay feet, but if you don't think you need an extension of grace, right, right. <laughs> above it, okay. Let, let me caution you. What I'm hearing you, you do is trying to put conditions on grace. There are no conditions. Yeah. Well, I, how I, you I, decide to live has its own consequences and its own blessings, yeah. okay? I think what I'm saying right. you know, is more from, a, more from a position of acceptance. You're right. There are no conditions for grace. Right. I, I agree with you. It's there whether you accept or not. It was there for Wilson to accept or not. Yeah. So the question then is, how do you know you have grace? <laughs> oh. Because it's not not tangible, especially from the Lord. It's oh. not uh, something you can hold in your hand. The trophy you can put on the shelf. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I immediately, Dale. When I think about that, I, I go back to His Word and all the references in His Word, W O R D, with respect to grace, um, forgiveness of sins over and over again throughout the New Testament. I, I, I just go back to his word as, as, a, as a definition of grace for context. Um, how do, you, how do yeah. you know if you have faith? How do you know if there's a Jesus? Well, faith yeah. is normally accompanied, accompanied by actions. Hmm. Well, yeah. I'm saying to, 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 to uh, Dale's point, you you have, you accept grace and you have God's grace because it's a gift. Mm -hmm. We 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 can choose to accept or reject the gift of grace. Oh, I suppose you could. You can it, live a life. You can live a life uh, that does not accept uh, Jesus. Does not accept. Uh, all that comes 
to you when you accept Jesus as your Savior. Yeah, you could. You could. A lot of people do. In fact, many people do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what distinguishes a Christian from a believer, in my view. Yeah, and yeah. I think it, it takes a certain amount of humility to accept a gift from mm -hmm. someone. Well, but here, here guys, you, you're missing the point. You get this gift whether you accept it or not. Whether you decide to live your life and enjoy the benefit of the gift is the difference. But you, you don't accept God's grace. It's there. Hmm. Maybe another way to put it, Joe, is I think you just said it right now. Whether or not you take advantage of the benefit, the benefit, it's there whether you... I understand what you're saying. It's there whether you accept it or not. It's there. Yeah, now, this is why way, it's a gift. You're right. So the only we're way spending all this time trying to figure out how do we identify it? How do we know we have it? How do we earn it? That's the point. That's why it's a gift. Because you can't figure that out. That's my point. Hmm. You just have to become aware of it. Just know you got it. Go to the next slide. And let that seep into your life. <laughs> yeah. true gift. Well, I, I think in other words, it's called faith. Yes. Hmm. Remember, grace is the true gift. It's given no, freely without that. condition. That's why it's so difficult. We're trying, we're trying to find a way to quantify it, calculate it, measure <laughs> it, look at it, figure out how do we get it. You got it. If I walk up to your house and I put something in your driveway as a gift, you got it. It's there. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You didn't do anything to earn it. You didn't do anything to warrant it. You didn't do anything to do anything. I just gave it to you. Quit yeah. arguing about it. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think, uh -uh. I think the thing that that keeps coming up here. You're you're right. I agree with you on everything that you just said. But to receive the benefits of the of that gift that's in your driveway to take right. advantage of the benefits. You have to receive it. You, you have to take faith. possession of it. Just like you have to take yeah. possession of Jesus in your heart. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. And start that's acting exactly on that right. basis. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. Bet. So I think, yeah. yeah. I think that's what, yeah. I, what I keep hearing here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how do you know you have it? If you're sharing it. Ah, there we go. Well, understanding the gift of grace is the first step in being grounded in grace. Mm -hmm. If you deny it, you're never going to have it. Nope. Yeah. Hmm. By the way, I really like that visual. Uh, it's in your driveway. Whether you want it or not, it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, it's like Christmas morning. There's a present that's wrapped and it's on the floor under the tree. In order to accept the gift, you got to go unwrap it. Yes. Yeah. And take yeah. possession of it. Yes. Just like you have to take possession of, of the spirit that's offered the Holy Spirit in Jesus and take it in your heart and God's grace comes with that. Yeah. yeah. understand it read the manual yeah. yeah what what does it mean what right mm. well you... remember uh when i started uh i told you that grace really when you unpack it there are a lot of different characteristics to it certainly salvation is a big part of it uh justification sanctification security assurance and discipleship are all individual characteristics of grace and I was going to, over the next couple of weeks, kind of uh, unpack all of that for us to take a look at on an individual basis. I mean, this is this is a very, very large uh, and complex subject, if you want it to be. But what it really is, is a simple concept. God loves you. He sent his son to die for you before you may have even been born. In all of our cases, that's a true statement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He saved us before we accepted it. Yeah. How about that for grace? Yeah. I'm going to give you a gift before you're even around to get it. <laughs> wow. What a concept. Hey, Joe, in your, uh, in your uh, future 
um, snippets of this, is there a little more concentration on the deserving, undeserving aspect of this grace? No. There, I mean, there, there's, there's some tangible uh, uh, definition about what some of these things mean, okay? But none of it's deserved. And none of it's earned. It's a gift. Yeah. Sure. And we get... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, and for those of us that have accepted Jesus in their lives and had seen the unbelievable blessings that we've received with God's grace, we should not really need any definition. You know, sometimes I think that we're there, there are sometimes where people struggle, it's kind of human nature, and we forget about all the good things that you said, Joe. Everything that you said is spot on. But sometimes I think that we can lose that focus temporarily because I think it's in our DNA sometimes where we want to earn something. And, um, you know, where works become more involved in terms of attaining our salvation. I mean, you can see it in mankind through religion and so forth. Forgetting this concept that you're saying that uh, all the virtues that you've outlined in this study today so I think sometimes that can be a struggle. The other thing I think that comes out of this is sometimes we are our own worst critics and forget about the virtues of grace. And we beat ourselves up for falling short. We all have struggles. We all fall short at certain times. But it's important to remember all the things that we've covered in the study this morning about grace. It's undeserved. It's unearned. It's there whether you accept it or not. It's there. And the only way to, to take advantage of the benefits is to recognize it and then wrap the present. You just said, Joe, that's under the tree. You know, one of the things that, that we all struggle with is faith. We all struggle with trying to see some demonstrated reality to help us feel comfortable about exactly what you just said, Chris. And the, and the real reality is all God wants is a relationship with us. And uh, he's willing to bless us in, in our entire lives if we accept him. So we spend our lives glorifying God because that's the right thing to do. Because that's the right thing to do in the relationship. There's no measurement system. There's no score to keep. There's no boxes to check. You live your life glorifying God because you want to. Because you love him. Just like you would love anybody. You love him and you want to treat him with respect and dignity and love and care. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, in a relationship with someone, you, you get in trouble if you try to keep score. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good point. Good point. That's why marriage counselors make so much money. People try to keep score. Yeah. <laughs> love doesn't have a scorecard. Love keeps no record. Hey, there, you go. there you go. Well said. Well said. <laughs> So that's what this is all about. This is all about letting into your heart all those blessings that God has for you if you accept the relationship with his son. Mm -hmm. That's yesterday, the only condition. Yesterday I was at uh, the Borland Clinic praying with some of the patients that came in. Mm -hmm. And the hard part um, was... Uh, and praying with them, especially when they spoke Spanish and I don't, is trying to have develop a relationship with them. And but asking them, do they know Jesus as their Savior? And they said yes, but the translator was a uh, um, LDS, and so I wonder how do we oh. keep from. How do we recognize when we're being deceived? Because there's been a, a lot of people that think they have grace. They think they have uh, mm -hmm. Jesus as a Savior, but are genuinely deceived. Mm -hmm. Or, or well, isn't, uh, isn't that where our isn't that where our faith has to come into play? We have to trust and have faith that what we're communicating is actually coming across and it really if we communicate it from our heart 
it's really up to the other individual to whether they fully understand it or not. Just like Joe's been saying, that gift is there. They have to pick that up. We're, it's, we're it's, extending it. It's uh, like, uh, it's like our, Pentecost. Yeah. I heard, I heard in my own language, I heard God's love. Why this is difficult, guys, is because it's simple. Hmm. It's just not easy. Believe it to humans uh, to complicate it. Believing <laughs> is believing is difficult. Mm -hmm. But the concept is simple. The gift is simple. There's no cost. It's a simple gift. That's the distinction. It's simple, but it's not easy. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. right. Hey, what, that, that, what's, think, what's new think. about man struggling with belief? That, that's right. the problem we have in our culture today. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. If you if you if you want measurement systems and if you want uh, ways to identify whether you're good or bad, go to the other side and listen to the devil. He'll give you a bunch of them. But having faith in, in, in what Jesus offers, that's a that's a completely different that's a completely different uh, set of activities. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You know, I I've been in some Bible studies and one was talking about Sometimes as people, you know, we, we do tend to complicate things and we'll add things to the Bible and and and, and for the concept of grace, grace is, this teacher was saying there are some churches that say, yeah, grace is a free gift, but you have to do some things to earn it. That's you where join, you have that's to join this church. Exactly you have to right. That's right. Right. Incorrect answer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's right. So but but when we talk about free grace. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, for, for Dell, we have to define these terms. If a person is yeah. brought up in, in some churches, it's going to be, yeah, it's free grace, I'll accept it. But first I got to do, well, listen, I got to join this church. I got to perform these rituals. I got to do this so that I can earn the free grace. Right. right? Yeah. Do which is, add, which is a add. false, which really is a, is an unfortunate belief. Yes. Yes. You can't, you, well, let's go back to the original That's concept. religion and if not a relationship. Had, if you had to do something to earn it, how would you ever know if you earned it? Yeah. yeah. Who keeps score? Where would you check in every month to say, well, did I did I do enough good things to get grace today, this well, week? Yeah. And if I earned it, can I honor it? How would you know? Yeah. Can I honor it? Can I, can I lose it? No, you can't lose it either. That's the good right. part. You right. can't lose right. your salvation. Exactly. Once you've accepted it. But if you if you've had to earn it, can you then lose it? Well, sure. That's a good point. Yeah, if you had to earn it, you you could obviously lose it. Yeah. yeah. That's another point. That's why God gives it to us as a gift. There's mm -hmm. no other way to do it. Some belief systems have tried to monetize this whole thing or they tried to, to create yeah, a sort of check the boxes so that you know if you're there but that that's just not the case that's pretty empty yeah that's very empty yeah. let's not forget the cost of that gift that god had to pay yeah he's already which paid is, the price that's which what was the price to understand. which was yeah. the price that we were supposed to pay yeah in right. consequence for our sinful ways right. God gave us uh, his son. Yes. Yeah. This, this, this is gift sense. beyond price. Yeah. Okay. This, this is not cheap grace in the sense that a heavy price was paid. No. No. Because that's what we all deserve, right? This is an undeserved gift. What is it? That that's right. We deserve undeserved, to God's unwarranted, presence. Unwarranted. Yeah. Yeah. We deserve death on a cross. Yes. But God, God paid that for us. Yeah. That's what makes this gift so incredibly massive and powerful and beautiful and amazing. Right. Amazing. Right. Yeah, I just reinforce the final bullet on this. If grace was earned or deserved, we would never know when it was achieved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or retained. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's like trying to deserve air or deserve your breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, huh, what do I have to do to keep breathing? You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is uh, this has been a very very healthy discussion. Um, this is not, uh, as I said earlier, this is not an easy concept. It is simple concept. It's a simple gift. But we as human beings, because of how we're wired and because of our orientation, 
really struggle with one of the simplest concepts there are, and that's mm-hmm. God's love. Well, you know, I think in the West we have this idea of the rugged individual, and 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 you got to work for it. I wonder if other cultures, other places in the world, have a, a easier um, approach or easier acceptance of this. Well, Very I don't think question. they have it, Ken, because I, I mean, think grace applies to Christianity only. It doesn't apply to to the forty two other under belief systems we've got in the world. You know, I mean, well, it, I guess maybe this is a Tom Love question. Where we're in the in the West, we got to we got to work for it. Yeah, Other yeah. Places have this idea that uh, it's easy to accept and give gifts back and forth. And well, t- excellent question. Gosh, thought provoking. The uh, it doesn't it uh, get to. Uh, this work ethic that is so pervasive, right? Yeah, and and, yeah. and it just seeps into every part of our lives, right? It's mm. uh, got to be busy. Well, the, Pur- the Puritan work ethic. Work yeah, work, yeah, work doesn't even come into the equation. We're I'm in a, a men's group here, and uh, we're we're going to have a little session on this, on the Sabbath. I think that's come up in our conversation here, but uh, you know, what is the Sabbath about? And uh, it, it, boy, that's a huge topic, but it, it, it's, sure. it's basically back to Joe's point just a bit ago about um, God wants our attention. So the Sabbath is, is, it isn't just, Hey, it'd be good if you just relax a bit and don't work so hard, and, mm-hmm. you know, take it easy. Right? No, 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 no. It's about, uh, giving our attention to God, who has given us grace. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's the heart of it. Without all the other distractions of work yeah. and home and commitments and TV and blah blah blah. Right, and earning it and blah blah. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting. The Jewish idea, of course, was that there is a day, a Sabbath day, right, mm-hmm. where where the Christian, it's no, it's all the time. It, it should pervade all our lives, and and you know it came to be Sunday, as as sort of the the day of rest. But it's 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 really about an attitude, and a constant uh, grounding in God's grace. Really, yeah, and that too is a gift. That Sabbath mm-hmm. is a gift, mm-hmm. right? But it's also a commandment. Oh yeah. You know, let's not forget the big picture here. The big picture is God delivered the Hebrews from Egypt way back, and he hired Moses to do that. And he had to completely build a whole new organizational structure and a whole new living concept for those people to take them to the promised land. And a lot of that, whether you like it or not, a lot of it ended up with a lot of rules and regulations because there's no other way to manage the behavior of human beings unless you have rules, okay? Now, we look at those rules today. We look at those 640 rules that the Pharisees had memorized, okay, 4,000 years ago, and we kind of scoff at them a little bit now. But let me remind you that Leviticus, chapter 18 and 19 and 20 in Leviticus, are the basic core principles under which the entire world still rules morality. So some of that stuff is not old-fashioned. It's still applicable today because it deals with helping human beings who are fallen and broken Okay, we all know that part. Okay, how do you how do you take in this broken group that that the devil provides delicious opportunities to on a daily basis in terms of I get to do it my way, and how do you manage that group? Okay, any of you guys that have ever been in a situation where you've managed people understand how difficult it is to affect people's behavior, and you have to create incentives and rules and guidelines and pathways that they can manage and walk through in order to get them to behave the way you want them to behave. And it's just not an easy job, okay? And now you add, wow. then you enter into that dynamic, the concept of faith and grace, and it becomes even more complicated. 
because we're all used to, well, what's the rule? What's the pathway? What's right, the, right. You know, how, how do I get there? You know, how do I go from A to B? Right. right. Uh, it's called faith. <laughs> it's called grace. Hmm. Didn't it's I cast relationship? Didn't I cast out demons in your name? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's all there. It's all done for us. And then, you know, we just haven't, um, I mean, I say we, I'm being editorial, obviously. I mean, just generally speaking, we all struggle with uh, being uh, beneficiaries of God's grace. It, it, it's just the way we are. We're human beings. We're kind of built, we're kind of built that way. Yeah. Mm. So as you unpack these things, you start really realizing how blessed we are by having a relationship with Jesus. And I, and I emphasize Jesus, not God. Okay, we all get to God through Jesus. Okay. Yep. And it's really interesting when you talk to people; everybody acknowledges God, but when you start talking about Jesus, they leave. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's a provocative statement, Joe. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's been my experience that Jesus is very difficult to talk to people about. God is not. Mm. Jesus mm. is the proof that God loves us. Well, it just is. Now, it, frankly, you're an easy group to talk to because you're all believers. So go out <laughs> and talk to people that aren't believers. Yeah. Everybody understands God. Yeah, God. God's, God's this guy that sits out there somewhere. God bless America. But you mean I got to you mean I gotta I gotta believe in Jesus in order to get to heaven? Whoa, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah, you're being intolerant. Uh, <laughs> yes, oh, no. uh, let's not go there. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> My goodness, what do you mean? There's only one way to get to, to heaven. Well, I don't know. Read the book. Anyway, John fourteen six. That's mm -hmm. good. Well. Uh, we are running out of time, and I think that Bill and I want to give you guys a quick update on Ron Petrie. We yeah, went over yeah, yeah. And visited Ron. Uh, what was that, Bill? On Wednesday, I guess it was. Uh, it was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Um. He was. Uh, he sat in his living room, fully dressed, and and talked to Bill and I. He wasn't in, in in a bed somewhere, even though he's under hospice care. Uh, I'll share my thoughts, and then, uh, Bill, I'll ask you to do the same. I, I thought he was uh, he was definitely on the downward cycle. Uh, he didn't look good at all. He was pretty pale and lost a lot more weight. Uh, you know, mm. he was fairly, you know, he communicated with us fairly well. He wasn't in a stupor or he wasn't uh, falling asleep or anything, but, but you could tell that he had significantly diminished capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Bill, well, I your agree. Thoughts? Yeah, that's that's a good summary. Uh, although he got up and out of the chair on, on his own, and he was oh, yeah. he was still Ron. He was still yeah. He was still conversing and talking just like he normally did. But mm -hmm. everything is it slowed down a notch, and it's uh, you could tell that he's on the on the decline. Joanne, yeah. uh, Joanne reports that uh, he doesn't eat much anymore. And he doesn't drink much anymore, and he sleeps virtually till noon every day or so. So all the attributes yeah. that we've identified as as typical characteristics of someone who's ending their life, he's exhibiting on a on a fairly regular basis. You know, does he talk about that? No. Well, he he's not feeling. Yeah, he he knows he's not uh, yeah. the same vital, you know, vim and vigor Ron that he used to be. He knows that. Yeah. He uh, he said that he uh, he's not driving anymore. He said, you know, I've had some strokes, and yeah. you know, you can't if you're having strokes, you you do not want to get behind the wheel of an automobile. So he said, I've had to give up driving, and he understands that part. So, but is he talking I mean, about end of life and finishing well? And uh, we didn't go there. No, uh, okay. We didn't Just go curious. there. Yeah. Um, the benefit we have. If you want to call it that, is that Joanne Petrie is probably the best. from a subject matter expert, probably a world yeah. authority in He's people that are dying. She's been dealing yeah. with it for thirty-five years. Yeah, and when she says to us, "Hey, Iran is slipping, and he's slipping very, very quickly," 
I got to believe that her observations of his behavior over a 24 hour period or a, a, an everyday period, uh, that's a pretty good testament. Yeah. You know? but he said, say hi to everybody. We told him that we are saying hi from everybody to him and praying for him. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to stop off and see him next week. Uh, yeah. I reached out to Joanne. And yeah. Joe, something that you said that I picked up on when we spoke the other day is, if you plan to visit him, it's probably best to do that in the afternoon, not in the yeah, morning. Yeah, do it after one o'clock so because if any uh, of you guys plan to do that, yeah. just keep that in mind. But yeah, um, yeah I reached out to Joanne. I'm going to try to coordinate something probably for Tuesday. I, I would strongly recommend, to the extent possible, anyone that's interested in seeing Ron, try to do that in the next few weeks. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's what time. Joanne says. Yes. Joe, the, the the person you're describing now is very different than the, the picture I, I have of Ron. Yeah, and I, I'm thinking my picture of Ron is from just it doesn't seem like just but just a few weeks ago. No, he's changed a lot, Ken, since we've seen. When you think about the last time he joined us, which was what when Joanne brought him over, what about a month yeah. ago? Yeah, a month he's, and a half. He's not that guy. No. Wow, that's true. Hmm. Well, guys, we're all going to be there. Uh, hopefully. We'll be there some, at some point, and then then, then we're going to go back home. We're all going to turn. Brotherhood, and uh, I'll reach out to Joanne when I'm there to see if there's anything that she needs around the house to be done, if there's something. And if there is, I'll let you guys know. Good. But I'll, I'll check on that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, probably best to coordinate it through Chris or myself so we can check in with Joanne. Um if it's part of, if it's somebody in our group, Joanne is not going to mind if you just knock on the door and if he doesn't answer the door, just go on in. The house, they'll keep the door unlocked. They do have a nurse that comes every day and may want to coordinate your visit with when the nurse is there. I, I don't know. We, we need to coordinate it with Joanne. That's all I can say. You know? Yeah. 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 Good. Mm. Okay, well, All right. I, I tell you, this has been a great subject, uh, a lot for us to think about. Joe, you referenced early on, you can, you can see the wheels turning, and yeah, I saw a lot of, a lot of wheels turning oh, yeah. in each of the men here, and uh, John, what a blessing to have you join us today. Hope we see more of you, yeah. but we're a real blessing, and your insights are always appreciated, just as all of yours are, Dr. Tom, Ken, Bill, Dell. Mr. Havey, and of course, Joe, another excellent job of leading on this topic. Look forward to picking up, you know, next week as well. And there will be other leadership uh, topic and series that continue through this year. Uh, if any of you besides Joe and I uh, would like to uh, take the lead or take the helm and lead on something that's on your heart related to leadership or that God has placed upon your heart, please reach out to me and let me know, okay? So uh, what a blessing. Uh, Dr. Tom, good luck with your uh, group and uh, studying on the Sabbath. Yes. Uh, that's going to be an interesting topic for sure. Yeah, yeah. But what a huge blessing, guys. Uh, any, other, any particular needs for prayer before we close out this morning? I need a groomer. <laughs> All right. I don't mean to laugh, Ken, but oh my God. Yeah, that's not that funny, Tom. Yeah, it's not funny. Yeah. It's not funny. No, Tom, no requirement. Grace, Tom, please. Where's that? Attention? I don't know. <laughs> the blessings of a growing business. There you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Anything else, guys? Well, I, I'll, yeah, one quick one. Uh, um, our son Nathan is working remotely here before he heads off to New York. Okay. The New York, excuse me, North Carolina, uh, in 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 a few weeks, and um, just prayer for uh, a, a church body uh, for him. The 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 God open opens up a a path toward uh, a a good church body. Is he I don't know where he's going to be in New York, York City. North Carolina? But... What's that? Is he going to both New York and? North no, no, I I'm sorry, I miss I misspoke. No, no, uh, he's going to Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, oh, Research oh, Triangle. Oh. I thought he was yeah. going to New York City. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's our other son, and that's not happening, it looks like him. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, he'd have to have some armor before he goes to that city. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I like going to Portland. I like going down to Portland, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? 
I would just ask for I would just ask for an opportunity to present itself to me. Um, doors close, and uh, we know that when doors close, there's usually an opportunity for another one to open. Okay. And just be alert and and uh, and walk through that door when it when it's open and presents itself. Okay. This is Amen. occupation, right, John? Pardon? Uh, this is occupation. Yes. Got it. Okay. Got it. Want to be a dog groomer? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm looking. I'm looking at this. My, Let's just bring it. I'm looking to my left. I'm looking, boy, kid, my left, I'm, looking, I'm looking over to my left and I'm looking at <laughs> Stu, our rabbit that we've had for 13 years. And wow. no, I don't want to be a dog groomer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity, wow. though. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's open. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Anything else?